All right, it's your boy Potty Potty here with the first episode of Rinkside. Rinkside, the podcast for goals, players, coaches, and owners all about the league. We've got a packed agenda for you today. We've got uh, stats through week eight. We're going to be looking at the current leaderboards for the pros. Then we're going to move on to the minors. And then we're going to wrap up with Potty's play of the week and a special interview by the commissioner of goals Krieg. So let's dive in. Pulling up the current leaderboards or standings uh, for the season four pros looks like there must be some technical issue here because Florida is actually ahead of Dublin right now. The challengers have been doing uh, immensely well. They're on an 18 win win streak which I believe is the current league record. Uh, Dublin is in close second, and all the way at the bottom, we've got the expansion teams. Good luck next year. Let's move on to the leaderboards for the pros. All right, so with our pros, let's shout out to our player of the week, Tom Krieg. He's leading goals with 19, points with 33, points per 60 with 3.18, and also shots on goals with 111. Having a great season right now. Looking forward to talking to you, Tom. And moving on to our rookies, we've got our rookie of the week, Rice Cake, who has 13 goals in first place. Uh, points leader with 17, points per 60 with 2.05 and also a plus minus of 16. And, uh, you know, an honor honorable mention, we've got Potty Potty up there who's leading the assist with 12 and is tied for second um, amongst Connor Darian with 11 in plus minus. So great job to Potty and uh, Rice Cake, you, you take it home this week. Now let's move on to our minors. All right, another technical issue we have here where Warsaw is not in first place, it is the Vancouver Whales holding about a three-point um, differential uh, against Warsaw. Great job, Vancouver. They've been off to a tremendous season. Um, certainly a very, very strong contender for the Cup. In last place, surprisingly, we've got the Atlantic Bucks. You know, they took the title last year, um, but they're currently at the bottom. But there's still plenty of hockey to be played, and we could see these standings change. So let's move on to my favorite segment, Potty's Plays of the Week. All right, with our first play of the week, we've got a massive hit by Blade. Gets the puck out, over to Banks, and Banksy just graffitis the walls with a fantastic goal. Next up, Warsaw is shorthanded. The Butcher clears the puck into the Ozone and just nabs it from AC MCI and gets a shorthanded goal. Fantastic performance, Butcher. Next up, it's double overtime. Sinners versus Vipers. Looks like it's going to be a nail biter. This is not as uh, cool as one of those four overtime wins. But, you know, still a notable achievement here. We've got uh, Hunt who comes in and sinks the putt to win the game. Now we've got one of my favorite goals of all time. Iko, Mika, Tikkanen, just dangling, skating through the, through the ice, comes around and finishes with finesse. What a fantastic goal that was. And finally, we've got our goal of the week. Undertakers versus the Challengers. Challengers, looks like Hill or Hall passes it to Trevor Lopez with a fantastic goal. Let's take another look at that entire clip. Skating around. We got the puck going places. And then boom! What an incredible finish. 
one of the all-time goals that I've ever seen. And that wraps up our content for this week. So let's move on to our conversation with the commissioner of the league, Tom Krieg. All right, it's Body Potty here with Rinkside, and I've got Krieg on the other line. Krieg, tell us how you're doing today. I'm doing all right, man. How about yourself? Hey, doing fantastic. Um, you know, I wanted to give the viewers like a glimpse into what is the origin story of goals. Can you tell me how it kind of originated? All right, so goals started May 19th, 2021. Mm. And it was a good friend of mine, uh, Thomas Smith. He was in the SFL, that's where I met him at. And then uh, over in the BHP as well. And uh, I was on his team and I was like, well, I'm big into hockey. Is there a hockey simulation league like this? Like, is there a football one? I found a baseball one. And then uh, I guess that resonated with him. He hit me up one day and uh, said, hey, were you serious about making this hockey thing? And I was like, yeah, man, I can make the hockey thing. I can stream all the time. You know, I have no problem with that. I'm not good with Google Sheets. So I would need to, you know, have help with that. And he was like, don't worry, man, I got the Google Sheets. And so, you know, we started working on it about, took us about 23 days to set up like season one to have, it started out as six teams, regular NHL pro teams, and there was six forwards and two D-men and a goalie on every team. And then the other lines were just filled in with CPU. And then as we slowly built, now we're up to where we are now, 16 pros and eight minors. It only wow. took us, what, a year and a couple months? Yeah. Grow to like 550 members. So, I mean, growing. That's a very impressive growth rate so far that the league has been experiencing. Um, do you see that continuing to kind of go into the future or are there any kind of roadblocks or challenges that are there? So our biggest roadblock is streaming. I mm -hmm. mean, there's only so many hours in the day and we already, we stream a 50 game season plus minors. So we're already doing some eight game streams that could go four and a half hours. What we're looking for, but uh, the roadblock is EA. We're mm -hmm. trying to do like a season mode or a franchise mode, but you cannot progress players in EA's franchise mode or season mode. So to do that, we would have to revamp the entire progression system if we wanted to do it that way, or just look at something else. They also don't have the good stats that you have in franchise and season mode. Like right now, we can't track block shots. Mm. Uh, there's a couple other things we can't track that we wish we could, but unfortunately EA so far has not given us that. Yeah, but maybe maybe one day in the future with enough following, you know, we'll have some influence. So I'm curious, like what goes into a, a typical week of simulated hockey? What happens behind the scenes? So behind the scenes, so after you guys all progress and then it goes to the rosters team, they input them all into rows that, Roses, he built a automated system that goes into a Google sheet that we just basically type in marksmanship for your player and it will automatically put everything into marksmanship for your guy. After we do that for each team, we will go into the game and physically progress the 450 members that we have in this league one by one. Uh, there's multiple, there's about five of us that go in there and do it. So, I mean, it's not a one man job. So, it actually helps you can only do it one at a time because the xbox doesn't let you be on the same account so that's a little bit hindrance but other than that it takes about six to seven hours maybe to get like everything accounted for and after that uh we find out who's going to stream the night and then uh about an hour before you start your stream you have to go in there and check everybody's lines on our lines page go and put that that takes about an hour depending on how many teams and then after that, we're ready to stream. And then you get the product that you see. Some people commentate, some people don't. At least the EA commentators aren't bad. <laughs> yeah, no, I like them. I think they're good. And they, they get better. I remember there was one EA game where you, you had Snoop Dogg as like an announcer. Yeah, I don't even know how that even happened. I think that was <laughs> like, I think that was the NHL 21 thing yeah. that he was like, they somehow got him to be like a guest announcer sometimes. <laughs> it just so happened that he showed up. <laughs> So, so since the days since the league was founded, what would you say has like improved in, um, in your opinion of the league? Uh, 
month. So definitely progressions has accrued, uh, improved tenfold. Uh, before it was like, we would go name by name, like down the thing and do the little thumbs up on the person. Now you just go to a Google sheet with Dublin and each player has their own tab. So you just click on that. You'll see exactly what they progress, what they're supposed to be at. And that's 10 times easier. Uh, lines and strats has come a long way. We used to just pretty much like put it in there, but now it's like a drop down tab. I mean, a, a lot of things has improved. Even our streamers have improved. We don't have the whole OBS thing yet. We're not that tech savvy. I have a couple of people that will like to help me. Uh, Winkler is actually going to be in Philly on the 11th and I might be able to convince him to like stop by and help me out hook it up. Not sure. We'll see, but it could be something that happens. So is Philadelphia where you're, you're based right now? Yes. And you, you pull for the flyers. Yep. Flyers, Sixers, Eagles, all of them. Nice. I'm a uh, base in Chicago. So I got uh, the Chicago teams behind me, but. Uh, well, then I don't like you. Oh, okay. <laughs> because the 2010 and Patrick Kane just scored a goal and ruined the Flyers' whole thing. Yeah. Well, I can't, <laughs> I can't say I got into hockey very much until I joined goals, but I've still got a lot to learn. Um, All right. So, um, you know, you touched on some kind of the limitations of EA. You know, what would you like to implement into goals, but you can't today due to EA? Uh, probably like a season mode. I think that would be 10 times easier on the streamers. And also even like um, stats pretty much because in their season mode, I can click on season stats and I can show you everybody's stats right down the row, whatever they want to do here. We're taking screenshots and then our stats team is taking them screenshots and putting into a Google sheet. So that's one of the big things that I wish they, we could do as a season mode, but without that progressions, it ain't going to happen. Yeah. You know, speaking of stats, um, when it comes to money, how does revenue support the league? So right now we're saving up for Xbox X's or mm -hmm. S's for all of our streamers. So how that's going to be like probably like thousand, a thousand, two hundred dollars because NHL 23 comes out next year or October 15th. And we want all of our streamers to have the new generation. It'll probably be better quality. You know, uh, Xbox X's have some really good specs and everything like that. So streaming from there, from the Xbox One, that's going to make a world of difference. And then after we get that settled with the streamers, if we have the major contributor, contributors, we'll start having paid positions and stuff like that. But as of right now, everything is uh, volunteer work. And I very much appreciate everybody that helps. Who, if you had to give a shout out, I know that a lot of people are kind of involved, but if you had to shout out a few names of the people that really make goals happen, who would you kind of say? So Evan, Rose, Doug, Scurvy Dog is a huge stat man. He's the one who puts out the team of the week on everybody. Uh, the roster team is great, all of them. Stats underneath Scurvy, they're great. But, uh, and the coaches, the owners, you know, without them every day and putting lines and stuff, and keeping the morale up because I know some teams aren't doing that well. You know, you lose morale, but we're still getting 35 plus viewers in the stream, even if your team's not doing well. So a lot of people, but like, yeah, Evan, even Matt, Matt is streaming right now because for some reason EA decides to, my Xbox cloud is not working. I was supposed to stream, but for some reason I log on right now and it shows me that Cleveland is gone. Melbourne's gone off my system, everything. So we're trying to get that figured out too. So hopefully tomorrow when I log on, it's all good. But we'll get to that when it's tomorrow. And if people wanted to contribute to the league, what would, you know, from a, maybe a revenue perspective to help support those, you know, new councils, what are some like avenues that people might have? So you subscribe, you uh, can boost the server. Um, we're trying to get merch stores out. We still haven't done it. Uh, actually, Colin Fiol is trying to get everybody's team logo and make it so it can get to any size that you want it just by the one picture. Mm. So basically like, you know, I have an Alaska photo and I want it as huge as I can be on this one sweater. Well, I can now, instead of it saying error or something like that, he's working on all of that. So hopefully that can uh, happen by the end of the season. 
Nice. You had those like vector based designs. Exactly. So yeah. Put them on anything. Yeah. So um, let's uh, kind of shift gears. We've kind of talked about the league. Let's talk about you. Um, do you have a, a player, a coaching position or ownership position in the league? So I own the Alaska Articles. Uh, and I do have a player on the team. It's Tom Krieg. I'm wearing the jersey. Yeah. We do this. You know, we turn around. It's got Krieg on the back. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, you got to jump down a little. But I think jump down. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Nice. I got my swag, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I have a player on there. Um, so far, we're doing good. We're in first in our division. We actually just beat Dublin, you know, and Turku. So we beat you and uh, your division. That's all right with me. We play, actually, the 18-0 Florida Challengers on, well, tomorrow, Monday. So hopefully we can uh, break their 18 – 18 win streak and put them back in the losers column. Is that is that the longest in the league history or has, has it, it is they actually it was 15 set last year by them. So they wow. break their own record this year. So they wow. are a powerhouse. What do you think goes into you know having a team that can perform that well? Uh Trev does an amazing job over there. He puts his players where they need to play. Like I know JJ McChuckles is like probably one of the best penalty killers in the league. And he's okay with that. He's like third line grinder and big, big on the PK. Then he has his uh, voodoo as a great sniper himself. His player has now came out of nowhere and learned how to score after I guess bear left. He said, fine, I guess I have to score. So, I mean, he's done an amazing job, especially after losing bear. I thought that was going to like pretty much tank him, but now here he is breaking his own record. So yeah. Huge you shout out to Trev over there. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite player in the league? My favorite player is Joaquim Alou. Oh, yeah? He is my right wing on my team, but all he does is hit people. If you go oh, look yeah. at our stats page and you go look at, like, hits for, like, the league leaders, you will see all defensemen all up and down, except for, like, he's in, like, second, I think, or maybe third, and the only forward, right wing forward. <laughs> wow. He just goes and hits everybody. He doesn't care. Shout out to Joaquin. Yeah, it's, Joaquin it's pretty crazy. Sure. Um, so I know that streaming can get you know intense, and you can uh, redeem different points for different shots. And I've heard about this shots night where things got a little little crazy for you. Uh, do you want to do you want to share? All right. So it was what maybe three three four weeks ago. Um, I went to Tennessee about probably two, three months ago in February, basically. And uh, we came home with some moonshine and we wasn't really drinking it. So uh, the wife was at work and uh, I said, screw it. We're doing uh, doing shots tonight. And I put on our little thing, the redeemed shots and Rose pretty much killed me. I mean, he was doing shots and then he would redeem the moonshine shots. I'd sure, cool, do it. And then uh, we had double shots. So he redeemed double shots, and I said, screw it, we're only drinking moonshine. That was a whole mason jar of moonshine. And oh. I ended up downing the whole thing within the eight games that we played, plus another five drinks. And uh, I made it through. Uh, there's actually a video on our TikTok. Uh, at the end of the stream, I went and I played a shootout against somebody. Kicked their oh. ass. <laughs> Kicked their ass. It's on TikTok, the video. I'm over here just cursing them, cursing at him, telling them he sucks. <laughs> <laughs> And then after that, you know, turn it off. And uh, around three o'clock in the morning, that's when my wife usually gets home from work. She calls me. So I'm like talking to her. And then right when she gets home, I'm like, I got to go. And I puke everywhere all over the bathroom, you know. And that was it. The real one you got to ask about their journey is Evan. Evan pretty much died. He, he ended up drinking so much that he just like stopped talking. The pause menu was up on the screen and nobody could oh, get wow. a hold of them. The game was over. <laughs> <laughs> I had to like DM his wife on uh, Discord to tell him to come come check on your husband because he's not <laughs> responding to anything. But yeah, he had a crazy night. But I actually deleted all of the uh, drunk stream stuff on stuff on our on our goals thing. I mean, I might bring it back. I'm not sure. Like I said. We're trying to go like real professional here and maybe get some sponsors along the way. So 
Yeah, let's 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 talk about that future. What um what do you kind of see, you know, five years or maybe just a year ahead of us? You know, what what's going to be new for the league? Where would you like to take it? Well, a year from now, I hope to have a full blown merch store. Every team, I want them to have their own merch store. You know, that'll be good for them, good for the league. Um, I'm hoping to get a couple sponsors in there. Uh, you know, just to get us more on the map. And we're still small. I mean, even though 550 members isn't really small compared to like some of the other sim leagues that I've seen. I think like the only one that I've been in, maybe two that are bigger than us is probably the SFL, and, like the CSBA, which is a basketball sim. And I think they're like the only two that I actually see with more members than us, which is pretty crazy. Um, I'm hoping NHL 23 brings something a lot better for us. Maybe a season mode for progressions, maybe a franchise mode for progressions. I don't know, but five years from now, I want this to be like a whole, a whole thing. We can make this a whole, just like the SFL, maybe even have a TV thing like they do. I don't know. We never know. Cause I know hammer, um, one of the red water, uh, owners, he tried it last week or the week before how to have an overlay with us that he can bring in his own broadcasters to pretty much like a freelance broadcast group with his own things. That's going to be able to show up all of our stats and our goalie stats and everything like that while you're watching the game. I know mm-hmm. that it was a trial of kind of did good, kind of didn't, but that's what a trial is. So yeah, who knows what could happen from there? Yeah. Sounds like very interesting, you know, routes ahead. Um, and um, yeah, I thought that was an interesting learning experience with the hammer jammer or hammer jack. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, uh, so he tried to host us, but put all the graphics that he could in place of like everything. So like when the goalie showed up in the beginning of the game, it would actually give him our goalie stats for the year instead of it just saying zero, 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 when we actually play because we use play now. But like if we were in a season mode, it would actually give their actual record during the season, mm-hmm. which I said is this probably like the best thing ever, but EA will probably never give this to us because it's EA. But Have you ever thought of like developing your own, maybe not you personally, but like working with a company to develop, you know, our, our own, you know, hockey video game that could, you know, be a little bit more customized for us? Uh, I don't even know where to start with that. I wouldn't even know who to ask. So no, it never crossed my mind because I just thought for right now it looked good, you know, because EA uh, makes a new game every year and we're able to transition. Transition sucks because we're making 550 players every time. But no, I have not actually even thought of trying to find my own hockey league. Might be simple. I don't know. I have no idea how what it takes to even build a game, but like meaning like where you're not going for Madden because or like real hockey, it would just be like a complete custom thing. I don't even know if you would need like uh, licenses for that because mm-hmm. we wouldn't use like Connor McDavid, you know, that he would never ever be in our game. It would just be Tom Krieg and Paul Tay and you know something like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe something to consider along the way. What what do you, what would you say? What does success look like for goals? Uh, success is everybody has a fun time. As long as everybody's happy, you know, we don't charge people money to be here. You know, it's not a, you, you can sit here, you can make a player, and as you progress every week, don't even watch your games. I don't care. As long as you have fun, and, like, you might just be one of the guys, don't watch any streams, but you go and check out the stats page. And you say, oh, well, look, I have three goals in 10 games or whatever. It's cool, you know. I just want everybody to have fun and just enjoy their time. In, in what would you say for, you know, people that are interested in joining the league, how would they go about doing that? And, you know, how would you kind of convince someone to, to, to join? Well, actually I convinced a lot of people to join. I have, uh, I mean, I have a lot of people that I work with in the league, mm-hmm. um, which is pretty cool, but uh, it's, uh, just go to discord. We have our own discord link because of so many booths. So it's just discord.gg slash G-O-H-L-S, and that's our Discord. You join there. Um, we also have the YouTube that I upload every uh, broadcast that we do. I'm a little bit behind on that, but we do have the YouTube for that. Um, 
But yeah, you come in, we'll, we have a lot of friendly people. You join right away, you'll see all the welcome posts that people get. And if you want to talk, you know, you can talk and just have a good time. That's all it is. Yeah. Just progress. That's all just we progress. ask. <laughs> you, got, you got from Sunday night to Friday night to progress. That's the easiest thing in the world. And even if you don't, you're, you're gone for a week or something, give your owner a thing, a heads up, and they can send it to any commissioner saying, hey, Paul Tay's not going to be here for a week. He wants to do hit the targets this week. Is that cool? And yeah, and then you'll post it as Krieg approved, and that's it. Hmm. There's a couple of people in the league that do that, so people don't miss progressions. Very nice. Like our big guy, shout out to uh, Corey Polly. I posted in League Alerts. You know, he had the pulmonary embolism and everything like that. And he's finally getting back up on his feet. He almost died. Um, but that was a thing. He reached out to Jess during all of this. I don't know how he did it on his freaking like deathbed saying, hey, um, I won't be around. This and this and this is happening to me. Can you make a regression plan for me? Jess came to me. We had the whole season laid off for him. So every time, every week, Jess just progresses off that. And that's it. Okay. Okay. And, and what would you say for you know, people that are players today but want to contribute more to the league, what opportunities might they have? Uh, we always need media people. Like, ringside is now a new thing. Um, we always need graphics. You know, uh, Tyler Grimes does a great job of graphics. Uh, Earl Flint as well. But, you know, they could always use the help. Um, you can be, I know, uh, like minors. Minors always needs GMs and coaches. I think there's a couple that are like, sort of into it, but sort of not. So, you know, they'll always get swapped around. Also, if you're on a pro team and you would like to contribute, just ask your owner. I'm sure if you ask, say, hey, can I learn how to coach? And I'm sure they'll have no no problem putting you on the staff because that just takes a little bit off their plate. Mm -hmm. you no, know, but if, if and they, they can teach you how to, you know, basically do it. So if we ever do, I hate to say the word, but I'm gonna say expand again, from 16 to probably 20, maybe. It won't be this off season. We're actually gonna take a break from expanding. Every season so far we have, have expanded. This season will we not. We're gonna see how the draft goes and everything like that. Improve our affiliate program. Um, so, you know, the minors are affiliated with the uh, NHL teams or Bulls teams. But I don't know, maybe when NHL 23 comes out, they do something great and we can expand it. Mm -hmm. A lot more work. You know, the expansion teams always hate it because, you know, they're usually towards the bottom of the thing. But it's a growth, it's a growth thing. You know, if, if you're going to take that expansion owner role, you basically know what's going to happen to your team. I mean, it's going to suck, but you also have the youngest people. So when like Krieg retires, I'm going to go back down to the minors too. So now that, that third year player that you drafted is now going to be as good as me and that I was, and my guy's going to be that 52 overall sucking over there so mm -hmm. that's something i like that that we implemented too is that we have that retirement system so there's not always all the time the same top guy so after like pretty much eight seasons your guy's gonna be starting to decline hard so you might as well just retire him. Mm. But, so that's a cool thing too yeah it's real interesting so, so creek you know i i uh Really uh, appreciate your time today. In, in closing, did you have any thoughts or words you wanted to share with the, the goals community? I just keep on keeping on, guys. You know, just keep having fun. If you need me, let me know. I mean, I'm always around. I work nights, so I'm working 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. Other than that, you know, you can reach me anytime. It doesn't matter. So let me know. All right. Yeah. Well, excellent. Well, uh, really uh, appreciate it again for the uh, – you know, introductory episode, and uh, we look forward to seeing you on the ice. Yeah, for sure. Can't wait to beat Dublin again. Oh, uh, we'll <laughs> see about that. All right. See you, man. All right. See you.